Hey everybody, I'm with C.C. Chapman and uh, he just got off the stage here in Utrecht, Holland and uh, I'm about to go on the stage and it's a unique venue, isn't it, C.C.? <laughs> it's, it's unreal. It's uh, in the round. We've got uh, people sitting all around us in this little stage in the middle and it's all white. So it's very, for guys who wear black all the time, it's extra cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's like 550 people all around us so it's, it's going to be an interesting experience. Um, but uh, over dinner last night, we had some really interesting conversations that centered on influence marketing, uh, the perils and the opportunities. And it's a very interesting and important marketing channel these days because there is this whole new genre of what I call the citizen influencers. And I, I think, Cece, you fit in that category. So you kind of cover both worlds. You are seen by some brands as an influencer and you also work with influencers yourself. So tell us some of the, let's start with some of the best practices out there. How are people connecting with you in a, in a meaningful and organic way that works? So I think uh, one of the key things, especially when you're trying to interact with influencers, is they're busy people. No matter if, if they're an influencer, they're busy. They're doing things. They have families. They have jobs. And the best ones, when you reach out to them, you keep it short, simple, and to the point. You know, I got an, I actually got one yesterday. Someone emailed me and said, hey, Cece, we'd like to work with you. Um, here's what it is. We'd love to discuss more with you. It didn't set up the whole campaign. It was short to the point. I could read the email. I responded and said, you know what? This isn't a really good fit. Best of luck. Let me know if, if you're looking for who you're looking for, and I might be able to suggest some people for you. So even out of the blue, do, I mean, do you respond to brands typically? Um, if it's something like that, like that literally was three lines of an email and it was somebody who I had met that person. They were working with a totally different brand, but I had met them at a conference. Okay, so, so there was a relationship. Yeah, there was a relationship yeah. there. And I think that's an important point to make. Yeah, because let's face it. I mean, there's, there's brands where, and it's funny because I didn't tell you this story last night, but just like you mentioned, you went, you got invited to a dinner with a brand at a conference. I've had that too, where they're like, just come, we're going to grab some meal, we're going to meet some neat people, and you meet the team, they say, hi, we're brand X, this is Joe, Sally, and Susie, but they're not pitching you. Yeah. And eventually, when they come back to you down the road and say, hey, we've got this new product we'd love to show you, you're at least going to say, oh, yeah, I'll, I will look at it. You bought me dinner. I, but you don't have to buy dinner, but it started as a conversation. Yeah, and, that, and that's how we create relationships in real life. Yep. And, and I think that's what a lot of brands forget is that, uh, we, it, it has to be a relationship and you have to create relationships with people online just like you would in real life and that might be over a drink or yeah. over a meal or just saying hello on the phone. And on the flip side too, one of the things I think brands seem to fall down on is if an influencer or even, a, it doesn't matter what their level of influence is, if they come to you and say, hey, I love your product or I like what you're doing, at least talk to them because you never know where that's going to, I had this happen with AT&T, they have this campaign called It Can Wait about not texting and driving. Mm -hmm. And at an event, I found a person I said, listen, I want to know everything you're doing on this campaign. I'm giving you carte blanche to pitch me galore just because wow. I love this campaign. Wow. And now we have a relationship. And they sent me some stickers, which is all, I didn't want any, but it was like, but now they send me notes on, hey, we got this new television or we new partner. And I don't always write about it, but I genuinely want to know about it. And that's something brands have to realize too, is no matter what the relationship is, it's up to the individual whether or not they're going to share it or post it. Don't sit there and go, hey, we'd really love you to post this, you know. When's but, it going to happen? Yeah, I don't, I hate, yeah. and I tell that with anybody who sends me, because yeah. I get random boxes in the mail, and I, I make it very clear to say, listen, I can't promise you a review because I don't know. I might never get to your product. Well, you know, I noticed that on your, uh, I believe it's your Twitter avatar, you've actually oh, yeah. put the, the, the text text the texting can wait yep. sticker on your avatar. Now that's so interesting, isn't it? Because you are, you're personally aligned and so now you're creating this organic advocacy for the company and this cause uh, because it's something you believe in. It's not something that was pushed on you. Right, and I have no, I have no official tie to AT&T. Yeah, they've they're never, not paying you to they're do not pay, it? No, and I, it was literally, they had this big campaign, uh, I forget which month it was, for the It Can Wait, and I saw this woman that I met at this conference had that sticker, or the Twibbon, as they call it, which I hate, but on their Twitter after oh, I said, that's a new one, the Twibbon? Twibbon, yeah, it's called yeah. a Twibbon, instead that's of a ribbon. Yeah. I said, where can I get one of those? And she's like, really? I said, yeah, I want to put one on my avatar, because I think it's really important. And it is, it's purely organic, and she could have just as easily not answered my email, 
But instead now, every time, the, see like you said, the fact, I've never drawn attention to it that I have it on my avatar, but everybody sees it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. And what would be some things to avoid if you're, if you're a branch? Let's just use you as an example. Okay. I mean, it, what are the, some of the worst practices out there? Which, uh, you know, is about 95% of the businesses out there. So, so I am pretty simple to rattle off. Yeah, list. I am the sexiest mommy blogger you've ever seen. I get the, uh, but I get a pitch every single day that says, dear mommy blogger. I often think of you that way. Yeah, I mean, because somehow I got on a, I got on a list somewhere that said I am a mommy blogger. <laughs> Nothing against mommy, because I do, I run, the, I run a dad's blog, so that's why. Um, I think mail merge is the death of anything, because my name, CC, breaks mail merge, because the period. Um, so don't, whenever I get dear first name, dear last name, I hit delete. I don't even read those. Uh, yeah. Put for immediate release in the subject line. That makes it easier because I have a filter that sends that right to my trash can. So that's an easy <laughs> thing. And I think the other thing is um, the easiest thing, and this goes for anything in life, but this is my biggest pet peeve, is respect the person you're reaching out to. It doesn't matter if they have one follower or one reader or a million readers. People are people, and I hate when a brand doesn't treat me with respect, whether it's respecting my time, or they expect something out of me for, you know, or if I write back and say, sorry, I don't have the time, they get angry, or if they ask me to write content and I give them a price, and they get offended because I think I should write it for exposure, those sort of, treat the people you're reaching out with with respect. Respect, and that can be something as simple as keeping the email short and on point, let me know how to get in touch with you, and then if I talk back to you, talk with me. Um, but that's the number one thing. I hate people who don't, brands think, they are above anybody they're reaching out to. And mm -hmm. in fact, that's not, we're all people. It's not, a, right. it's not a hierarchy. It should just be me talking to you. Yeah, that's, that's kind of been my mantra. You, you, you've got to stop thinking about yourself as B2B or B2C. You're yeah. P2P now. Yeah. You've got to connect people to people. Well, CC, awesome catching up with you. Likewise. How can people find you on the web? Uh, you can go to cc-chapman.com. is the easiest place to find me. Or on Twitter, I'm cc underscore Chapman. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you.